It's Independence Day, so let's talk about what's going on in America. Freedom, it's under attack in your state. Your Republican leaders, they're banning books, making it harder to vote, restricting speech in classrooms, even criminalizing women and doctors. I urge all of you living in Florida to join the fight or join us in California, but we still believe in freedom, freedom of speech, freedom to choose, freedom from hate, and the freedom to love. Don't let them take your freedom. Paid for by Newsom for California Governor 2022. Remember that ad from California Governor Gavin Newsom? It went viral with more than 3 million views. And you can kind of see why. Newsom wasn't just talking about Florida Republicans or Governor Ron DeSantis. He was mocking them, using the idea of freedom, that beloved value oft touted by Republicans, against Republicans. Newsom was hammering a party that almost never gets hammered by the left and in a way that resonates. For as long as I can remember, Democrats have been terrible at that kind of aggressive and engaging messaging. There was Michael Dukakis, former Massachusetts governor, 1988 Democratic presidential nominee who couldn't even answer a hypothetical question about his wife being murdered without resorting to dull technocratic talking points. Or remember John Kerry up against George W. Bush in 2004. What people needed was some charisma, some personality. Kerry was invited on John Stewart's Daily Show, and one review described Kerry's appearance this way. He was a charm vacuum forced to actually borrow mojo from audience members. Ouch. I could go on and on. But you get my point, which is sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. As old as the adage is, but Democrats perhaps need to be reminded of that. A new book takes on the challenge just when the stakes couldn't be higher. The Persuaders at the front lines of the fight for hearts, minds and democracy, written by MSNBC political analyst and author of the Inc. newsletter, Anand Giridharadas. It's a sort of playbook for how pro-democracy movements can actually be effective by speaking with activists, politicians, educators, and everyday citizens fighting for democracy, Anand lays out a strategy that's both easy to follow and hard to ignore. Command attention, make meaning, meet people where they are, pick fights, provide a home, tell the better story. In a New York Times essay adapted from the book, he writes, in America, the pro-democracy cause is struggling to win the battle for hearts and minds. Organizers warn that the right is out-competing small-d Democrats in its psychological insight into voters and their anxieties, its messaging, its knack for narrative, its instinct to make its cause not just a policy program, but also a home offering meaning, comfort, and belonging. So as Democrats struggle in the polls just weeks away from crucial midterms, is there time for them to get a more effective and persuasive message across to the American people? Is there a better way? Who better to ask than Anand Giridharadas, author of The Persuaders, who joins me now. Anand, thanks so much for coming back on the show. Congratulations on the book. Uh, my first question uh, has to be about what is it? What is it that makes Democrats so bad at messaging? What is the root cause of what I think everyone agrees is a real problem for liberals and the left, messaging? Yeah, and, and, and to be clear, I think it's even more than messaging. I think messaging is part of it. It is a lot of those things that you just showed. It's messaging, it's attention, it's connection and community and transcendental experience. It's a lot of different things. And I think what explains to your question, that kind of lack in all of those things, a lot of those things have to do with uh, human beings as they actually are, what actually moves people, what actually connects people. And, and a lot of those things are, I think, what highly brainiac people might look down on or not think a lot about, right? And as the Democratic Party has become, as many center-left parties have around the world, become severed from their labor base, Right? I mean, in many countries, they're, as you know, called labor parties, but almost nowhere are they actually labor parties anymore. And the same thing happened yeah. here. Um, they've really become affluent, college-educated people parties. And they've become parties in that period of not just policy shifts in the neoliberal direction, but also just kind of parties of spreadsheets and data and, and like kind of nerds. And, and the, a lot of the people, I think, attracted to dedicate their lives to this struggle are very good on policy very good on understand crunching data and very good on what the science about climate is. Uh, but when it comes to the things that actually connect with people, the messages that connect with them, the things that make people feel part of something, right? The way Trump rallies for negative purposes, 
clearly gave people a sense of being part of something separate and apart from the yes. agenda. Uh, the way in which you can actually fight, and, and it's okay to fight. Uh, these things, in some ways, are not necessarily the norms of highly educated people uh, who 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 kind of crunch data and think for a living. And I think I, this so, book is a is a loving intervention, uh, hoping that the pro democracy side in American life gets its acts together and act together and learns how to outcompete the fascists, not simply condemn them. So, Anand. Take a look at Pete Buttigieg, who often goes on Fox and goes viral, dunking on their hosts and their talking points. Have a listen. When uh, public officials go into public life, we, we should expect two things. One, uh, you should always be free from violence, harassment, and intimidation. And two, you're never going to be free from criticism or peaceful protest, people exercising their First Amendment rights. Okay. And that's what happened in this case. Remember, the justice never even came into contact with these protesters, uh, reportedly didn't see or hear them. And these protesters are upset because a right, an important right, that the majority of Americans support was taken away. So on the one hand, he's very polished, eloquent, super smart. On the other hand, his critics would say he's someone who doesn't show much emotion or passion. He's seen as a very ex-McKinsey centrist politician. What do you think of someone like Buttigieg as a persuader? And who else do you think does persuasion well on the Democratic side? Are there any role models? Yeah, I think there's a lot. And I think there's a lot of different people who are good at different pieces of it. And in a way, what I'm arguing is for the movement as a whole to upskill itself in light of all of those examples. So so let's say about, you know, Secretary Pete. I think one of the things that he is really terrific at is employing right wing frames for issues on the Democratic agenda. Right. He is he he's partly because of where he grew up. He's very oriented towards saying traditional Democratic Party goals in language that, you know, might appeal to a kind of center right moral framework or a Christian moral framework or a libertarian moral framework. And as we saw with the Kansas abortion campaigners who used the uh, contempt for mask mandates to protect abortion in Kansas, uh, sometimes that kind of empathic understanding of moral frames besides your own can be very useful in persuasion. I think we see in Gavin Newsom, which you played earlier, uh, a similar thing, right? The freedom frame. But uh, Gavin Newsom has done another thing on my list, which is picking fights. In his post-recall yes. persona, he's, he's shown a great picking fights of people. He doesn't even need other governors, right? He has no actual, they're not in his state, he's not in their state, but but picking fights, defining issues. I don't even know he's really running for anything. I, I think he's actually picking fights because it's a useful teaching tool. Um, I think if you go to my command attention uh, point, AOC is the definitive politician in this country on commanding attention. And she does what a lot of people on the right do for dystopian purposes. She does for kind of utopian purposes. But it's the yes. same skill well at some level of just like making you... the whole United States of America talk about something for 15 minutes. That is an so... incredibly important skill in the fragmented media age we live in. And it's a skill at some so what... level I think most Democrats look down on. One last question for you on those dystopian right-wingers. You write, quote, the fascists are doing as well as they are because they understand people as they are and cater to deep, unmet needs. And any pro-democracy movement worth its salt needs to match them at that. Can you unpack that briefly for us? Because you're not talking about material needs here, are you? You're not talking about cheaper health care, child tax credit. You're talking about something deeper, more existential, right? The, you know, the, the Persuaders book is about organizers in particular. And one of the things that I really learned that I didn't understand spending time with organizers over the last few years for the book is that organizers think what the most common word I kept hearing about their job description for themselves is meaning making. They think of themselves as being in the meaning making business, right? A term I didn't even really know. And meaning making is not asking for votes. Meaning making is not knocking on doors. Meaning making is not chip in five bucks. Those are all in a way transactions. Meaning making is basically what they understand to go on at all the other times uh, in between all those transactions, which is 99.9% .9 of the time, right? Meaning making is when you see some Spanish speaking cashiers at your Walgreens, you don't automatically in your head go alien invasion on the southern border. Someone else, usually, media, politicians, is building yeah. an intellectual ladder for you from the stimuli 
to the stance, right? When you see Barack Obama give a speech in 2004, the average person may not think this is a redemption of the ideals of the nation, right? It takes meaning making, writing, thinking, publicity, broadcast yes. to, to help make that meaning. Organizers think of themselves as being in the meaning making business, helping and people sort out how to process the change they are seeing. And, and if I could leave you all with one thing, it is that in an age of discombobulating change, some great changes we're living through, racial gender progress, uh, progress on LGBT rights, some bad changes we're living through, climate change, mass displacement and manufacturing, just a yeah. whole heap of change in our time. Democrats and the left generally have totally failed at the meaning-making project to talk people through, walk with people through their confusion about what they are seeing. Yes. And when you do that, you leave the the worst actors in the country, in media and in politics, 100%. you leave them the task of organizing and explaining the world to people.